Welcome to Electrify America, where everyone just looks confused. <laughs> And welcome to another out of spec guide video. You join me in beautiful Sedona, Arizona, where we're just pulling out and we're actually heading to do a little bit of an experiment right now. And the experiment is um, there are so many electric vehicles that come with free charging right now. We've talked about it at length. Uh, Hyundai electric vehicles, Volkswagen electric vehicles come to mind, Lucid comes to mind, and plenty of others. And most of those free charging programs are with Electrify America, which is um, sort of the only network that you can rely on to get from A to B in the US, uh, because they're the only ones who've built out a network linking major metropolitan areas. And they've done that as part of a settlement for Dieselgate, and that's the reason Electrify America really started. And now they're starting to build out more and more stations through these rounds of funding and everything like that. The big question is, Electrify America just started to deploy charging stations that they are not paying for. There are charging stations that you and I could set up a private business and purchase them from Electrify America. That means that we could say, hey, we want to put charging in these areas, and we'd go to Electrify America and say, hey, we'll buy the equipment, we'll buy the services, we'll pay you a fee to run the back end network. I'm not sure exactly how all these contracts go, um, but essentially they'll be branded as Electrify America, uh, but they're not owned and operated by them. They're actually, in this case, owned and operated by APS, which is Arizona's utility, if you will. Now, I have since visited one of these chargers previously in Globe, Arizona. There's another one here in Sedona. And uh, they're putting in the big boy 350 kilowatt chargers. You activate them with the Electrify America app. Everything seems normal until you notice a little thing on the app that says AP or Electrify America does not set the pricing for these sites. The pricing is set by APS. So the experiment is, and I genuinely have no idea, on cars that have free charging programs, like this Porsche Taycan we're driving right now, this comes with 30-minute uh, free charging sessions on Electrify America. If we plug into the APS charger, do we still retain free charging? Or, because it's technically not them, are they going to bill us for the charging power that we're taking? Uh, I think it's a 50-50 shot. I don't know what to expect. It's gonna be really interesting. And even more interesting than this particular charger finding out on this, you know, maybe APS is a small number of chargers, but there's a huge cross country, um, uh, you know, sort of installation with Travel Centers of America, I believe it is, TA, um, that are buying like hundreds of these things from Electrify Commercial. If those, they charge you for it, you know, like if your free charging plans don't qualify for those chargers, then uh, the benefit of free charging for the user just went down significantly if you're gonna arrive at sites that don't have free charging. If we get free charging, then I wonder how they're actually paying TA or paying APS for the electricity that they're taking even though they own and operate. Lots of questions here. We're on our way to go find out. Look at how gorgeous it is here in Sedona, Arizona. Absolutely beautiful. And um, they're 350 kilowatt chargers. We're at 29% state of charge. So we should get pretty good speeds. Although I did put the Tyke on for those who are curious in battery friendly quick charging mode, which just will reduce the amount of time that we put massive load on this battery pack, charging it rapidly. So we only use the, uh, we uncheck that when we really need to get in and out of a charging spot, need 270 kilowatt charging. In this case, we're gonna be looking at the views, walking around. We, we are okay if the car charges, you know, just a couple minutes slower than, than without it, and it'll save the battery pack just a slight bit of degradation, not really that major. But uh, we're nerds, so we try and optimize the car. Let's go see what happens. I genuinely have no idea. Take a look at this sign right here. It says Poss Grounds Park, or Posse Grounds, I'm not sure. It says park hours are 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. Does that mean that the charge at, charging is, um, offline at 10 p.m. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not seeing any gates so far, so I don't think they could really stop you from charging if you were coming through. Now, most travelers will not be using this uh, charging location. They'll be using the one in Flagstaff, and that's probably why this charger ended up here from being purchased by APS, because they probably get a lot of um, visitors coming to Sedona needing to charge, and there's probably not much of a business case to support corridor charging. Um, here, but especially not in a park. I've never actually even seen a charger in a park before. I mean, this looks like a park.
park on steroids. I can see the chargers back over here to the right. There's a Q4 e-tron uh, plugging in right over there. So this could be interesting. And uh, wow, beautiful views. This might be one of the most beautiful chargers I've ever seen. But they're the um, older Signet chargers, the Gen 2 Signets, I should say. So it says that one's 150 kilowatts. Um, which is fine for us. We don't really need anything more than that. What do you say, Anna? Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Well, let's. That guy's trying to pay with a credit card. He looks confused. confused. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Electrify America, where everyone just looks confused. <laughs> that is just the funniest thing. Let's well, I guess we'll, we'll plug into the 150. We don't need massive charging speeds here. And because uh, I'd actually like to walk around a little bit, check this out. So let's see what their pricing is and let's see if they even bill us. They have upgraded the branding with the new EA branding but the actual wrap of the charger is APS. Well you join me here in beautiful Sedona at the APS charging station. I'm honestly not sure if we should refer to them as APS or Electrify America charging stations or both because it's purchased. Now if you're spending this much money um, you definitely better get your branding on there and they did a good job with this and so you can see it's APS uh, labeled right here. But if I come over here to the software and I click pricing, it's 48 cents a kilowatt hour. And I'm fairly certain that is what um, Electrify America charges rack rate. So they have matched EA's pricing. The only problem is here in the app, it says pricing at the station is not determined by Electrify America. Check the charger's display for pricing details. I pay $4 a month, as most of you probably do, for Electrify America Pass Plus. That allows me to get discounted rates on electricity. And if even if you charge once or twice a month, it's worth it because that breakover period, it's not there. So the app won't tell me how much it costs. It just tells me the pass pricing is 48 cents per kilowatt hour. If I go over here to member, it says pass plus members better check the app to see how much you're gonna be charging. You're charged for charging. So what's really crazy is I genuinely, if I were to bring an electric car here and swipe here, I have no idea how much it's gonna cost me. And that just seems like a blatant oversight. So we should do that experiment after we see if we get free charging with the Tycon. So I've opened the charging port. Let's see if plug-in charge is even supported on this um, app. I have plug-in charge turned on in the Tycon, so it should automatically connect, bill our account, and start charging. So you'll see here it says connecting to vehicle instantly, which is great. It will go through a little bit of ISO 15118 communication protocols. And then once it's there, it'll do a payment processing through plug and charge. There's a certificate exchange that happens. And then we should start charging. I genuinely don't know <laughs> a, how it would charge us because I think we actually put a credit card in the Porsche app is how it would bill us. For example, yeah, payment authorized. So plug and charge works. Um, what's interesting is in the Porsche app, we, you, know, you only get 30 minutes of charging. So you need to have a credit card on file if you charge for more than 30 minutes. And uh, not for idle fees because Electrify America doesn't charge idle fees. And it seems APS doesn't charge idle fees either because on the charger, when I went to pricing, it said $0 idle fees. So you can, in theory, just come here, plug in your car and go for a walk all day. And nothing would stop you from doing that other than me ripping this thing out with my Rivian, <laughs> hooking up a toe strap. Not that I encourage anyone to do that, but it would make a good video. And now we're stuck on payment authorized. The car has not started charging yet. We're just still waiting for the communication protocols to go through. And uh, everyone always wonders why I praise Tesla superchargers so much. And this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> we're still just sitting here because the CCS communications are so bad. Oh, wow. Take a look at this. It says, please unplug to start a new charging session, reconnect. So we are actually having some issues off the bat. I just want to know if it's going to charge us or not. This is a guide video as an experiment. I was trying to think about what channel we should put this video on. I thought guide would be interesting because we're covering a lot of, you know, pricing topics with charging. I'm going to try a different handle now and see if it wants to spin up the charger. So we're in the charger claims everything's available. This is charger number one in the app here. It says charger number one is 50 kilowatts, but this is a 150 kilowatt sticker. <laughs> so it's possible that this unit yeah, see now here, plug and charge didn't work at all. I think maybe this unit is bad. All right, we got to keep the video going. We're going to try the other charger. This is getting messy. Come on, EA. Come on, APS. Also, I just, I hate to be this guy, but if APS wants to build a reliable network of chargers in Arizona, why the heck would you choose Electrify America to do that? <laughs> just, just based off of this singular experience. It's not, 
it's not going well. Their taxpayer dollars or utility payer do dollars of APS are not going to good use because this is not the experience we should have. We're now connecting to the vehicle over here. This is a hyper fast 350 kilowatt Signet unit. Should deliver all the amperage that the Taycan is looking for at relatively high voltage. Payment authorized, all is good. Initiating charging, that's what we were waiting for last time. And here we go, look at this. 36 cents per kilowatt hour on the Taycan inclusive plan. Um, interesting, it says one to 339 kilowatts. So if you pull 340 kilowatts, what do you pay? I don't know. Let's see if it goes free or if that's actually what it's gonna charge us. 36 cents per kilowatt hour is the pass plus rate, by the way, um, for the rest of the country. So I imagine the pass and the pass plus pricing is the same at these units. But what's interesting is because APS sets the pricing, they can change it to whatever they want. Or because any other electrified commercial situation sets the pricing, they can set it to whatever they want. So, here we are, we are charging up, we're doing 177 kilowatts on a relatively cold battery pack with battery saving mode on, so that's pretty damn good actually. Um, let's see what happens when we start racking up the kilowatt hour number if it bills us. Actually, no. So it is getting the free charging, how about that? That is pretty cool. We'll wait for another, we're at 1.5 kilowatt hours, let's wait for another 500 watt hours to go in and see if it bills us. And the answer is, the answer is no. So the Tycon's plan stays even with an electrified commercial installation like APS, or at least it has the ability to, I imagine there's some sort of back end when they install these chargers to decide whether or not, you know, free included plans will transfer or not. I'm not totally sure, but at least here it does. That's really promising. And that's great news for people who bought cars. You know what, correct me, I'm correcting myself. Take a look at this. Free charging does not transfer. We're charged 72 cents right now. They want it, they, they hid the first couple kilowatt hours from being billed and there it is, 72 cents. Normally what happens on the charger is um, that'll just stay zero until we hit 30 minutes and then it'll start billing the car. So free charging plans don't transfer <laughs> or at least don't with APS stuff. So I think that's um, quite concerning, especially as Electrify America is gonna build out as many chargers as possible using other people's money, which would be them selling Electrify commercial deals. And um, here in this case, at least it seems that they are billing for the energy and the free charging plans don't go through. It seems a little bit weird to advertise a car with free 30 minute charging with EA and then not actually get it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think in the comments? Let me know. I'm going to also try swiping pass plus just to see how that goes through. And um, let's see if it resets on this. We should hit six kilowatt hours right there. Still weird that the charging cost hasn't fully updated. Maybe they do it every minute they, they add money. I don't really know. Let's... Um, yeah, let, let me try swiping with my Pass Plus membership. Let's see what the final bill is for this. So we've put in six kilowatt hours and the time it would take my leaf to do it, it would take like two hours to get that much energy into my leaf. <laughs> it really charges slow. So I've just stopped, sent the stop uh, request from the charger to the Tycon or from the Tycon to the charger. Charging ports open. Let's take a look at the final bill. Here we go. Here. We were 7.2 kilowatt hours in two minutes, 36 cents a kilowatt hour. Interesting, now it says $0 per minute. So we did get the free charging from the Tycon. This is very confusing. <laughs> oh boy, okay. This is just not the most user-friendly way to figure out how much you're spending on charging. Uh, so I guess, back to the original thought, free charging does transfer, at least in this case. We, I don't know about other electrified commercial installations. Let's, uh, let me pay with Pass Plus and see how much we're billed then. So I'm going to activate station number two right here in the app. You'll see here I have Electrify America Pass Plus. Pricing at this station is determined by APS. Check the charger's display for pricing details. I click pricing, I click member, it doesn't tell me. What's weird is this actually just said 36 cents per kilowatt hour and then quickly went to 48. I don't know how that was possible. So I have no idea how much I'm about to pay plugging in my car, but I'm gonna swipe on the charger to activate it. It says, please plug in. I will do so right now. 
Who knew making videos at charging stations could become a job? <laughs> okay, so now we're connecting to the vehicle and I'll update you in just a few moments to let you know how much we're being billed per kilowatt hour. And well, it's been five minutes. I've let this thing run. We've had very variable power. What's actually funny at this particular installation, only one of these four chargers is working properly. You saw this one fail. The one all the way on the other side is just black, completely dead. The Q4 is getting a good charging session. And this one was just going like 30, 90, 140 kilowatts, 30, 70, 30, 90. It was just like, whoa, all over the place. So let's end the, uh, the charging right here and let's see how much our bill is going to be. I like how Tycon has a little stop request button. It's basically the same port that they use for uh, type two CCS in Europe because they don't have a little um, button on the top of the charger, a little latch button. So let's come over here. We were charged 36 cents per kilowatt hour, which is the new pass plus, plus pricing for Electrify America in the US that's been raised from 31 to 36 just uh, earlier this month. And um, yeah, so, so what's funny is it's, we had no idea how much we were gonna be billed until we started charging and uh, APS has matched EA's pricing strategy. I wonder if we'll find stations that don't match EA's pricing strategy as time goes into the future. What we're gonna do now is plug the Tycon back in and uh, plug and charge and use the free charging because there's no reason to pay for it when it's free and go for a hike. And uh, we're on a road trip, so we need to charge this thing up pretty high to make it to close to Albuquerque, I think is where we're headed to, somewhere along that stretch. So let's get some juice for free. And we've learned a lot at this particular charging station. First of all, maybe if you're gonna do an Electrify commercial deal, make sure that the chargers have really good uptime because as far as we can tell, this one's completely dead, that one's completely dead, and this one's sending weird power. The Q4 is only getting good power. So that's a consideration, I would say, if you're gonna be buying chargers and installing them. APS, maybe do your homework. EA, maybe make your chargers work a little bit better. I don't know. Uh, next uh, consideration is if you have a free charging plan, we at least know it's possible that with an electrified commercial installation that your free charging plan can also work with those particular chargers. I'm not saying it's always going to work because I'm sure we'll find some chargers that said, hey, we don't wanna support those free charging cars. Or maybe EA is writing the check directly to compensate for the electricity. I'm not sure how it's done. It doesn't really matter. All we know with APS, free charging works. And um, lastly, if you're thinking about installing charging stations, put them in Sedona, Arizona, because this is beautiful here. Where else would you wanna go? I mean, if you can't charge for whatever reason, this is the place to not be able to charge. Absolutely gorgeous. So thanks for watching another episode of Out of Spec Guide. Just a fun little challenge, fun little test. Unfortunately, more broken chargers. See you in another one soon. Bye-bye.